Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of the truck refurbishment. Today, uh, I actually got the paint um, this week. I, I chose the, the, the color. I chose to do the paint myself. I found a paint gun. Um, really, really nice one. I tried it this morning. Really nice paint gun. It's a gravity fed, so the tank on, is on top there. $140. It really feels like super solid. Uh, very nice quality, and it was rated really, really well for a great, like, do-yourself, uh, weekend warrior type, um, <laughs> see all the boxes. <laughs> I won't need for cardboard. Um, yeah, the, the, it was, it was, uh, reviewed very well. It's like, don't expect, uh, they, like, they were saying, like, don't expect professional results, but it atomizes quite well, uh, for what, it, you know, for what it does, and that, which is, sounds pretty much perfect for what I want, so I'm not, I'm not expecting perfection. I'll do what I can. Um, so, uh, because I got this new paint, I'm not going to say the paint color right away. You guys will see it when I start painting. Um, but because of that, this paint, this interior is not going to look good at all. So, let's just see, like, the before. Right? Brown. And even inside, it's all brown. And the back, brown. So, I'm going to paint this all, uh, all black. So, we'll have to do more cleaning, more sanding. I'm going to... So today I'm just gonna like take apart the dash, take all that stuff off. Uh, hopefully it's not too difficult. I wouldn't expect it to be, but hopefully it's not too difficult. And uh, once I get it off, I have I got this really nice quality paint uh, from Dupi Color uh, Vinyl and Fabric. So I saw some videos. Seems pretty pretty simple. Um, and on the inside. Uh, black, say again from Dupli Color. I love their spray cans. Their, um, their, uh, the nozzles in these cans are really, really nice quality. They they put in a really straight uh, spray, so it's really easy to control, and uh, I get good results from it. That's what I use for this. Actually, that was that was a co the the company that got that got these covers on. So the paint's really nice quality, super solid. Just a little bit dirty here, but uh, so pretty neat. All right, so let's, uh, let's all right. get started. Uh, geez, what a job. There's so many wires behind this, and I can't see how to disconnect it without, and probably if I even if I did, I wouldn't be able to put it back together. So I just, like, separated the dash from the truck, so I'm a I was able to, like, pull it a couple of inches. I'm able to, even able to get it a little bit farther than this. That side is pretty free, but just because of this, I don't want to figure around with that. I'm sure I'm not gonna be able to put it back together, but I was able to tape up the um, the windshield and I'm, I'm gonna be able to clean this and then spray paint it and put it back in place, hopefully without too many consequences. Uh, I took off the trim in here, up here, and the visors, like the sun visors. So I took those off. Uh, they're all, everything I put in the box here, those will all be cleaned with soapy water, like with dish soap water. And then dried, and then uh, painted individually. So, yeah, pretty gutted. I'm gonna have to like cover up the back window here as well before I paint in the in right. inside. Everything has to be washed before painting. So luckily, I got my my crew out here washing all the parts. Piece off the front to replace the thermostat, which is right there. It's very crusty. And it's kind of, while that's still in place, I'm going to clean around it. All right. That's the new part all cleaned up and with my custom gasket. And that's the engine part all cleaned up and including the new thermostat. So that springy thing in the back is always towards the engine head. So I guess I'll have to put it uh, along with the part. Uh, I guess I could put it like right in the gasket. There we go. I might even hold it in place. There. Perfect. There you go. So I'm pretty sure this is the original. <laughs> Could very well be the original uh, thermostat for this truck. So good time to change when I have everything apart anyway. It's not a big thing. Two screws and I got the thermostat changed. So... Uh. Okay, turn up your papa. You see?
this is probably way too early to be modifying the engine, but um, yeah, I was um, I was talking to some guys on the uh, on the interweb, on the the, the forums, and uh, I had posted uh, what was it? I was asking what the a certain piece was, but anyway, he had uh, oh right, I was asking about vacuum line, so he gave me a really hand, a handy. Uh, uh, diagram on the vacuum lines to make sure that I can kind of trace them. I got this even bigger here, and that this is going to be a great help for me to to be to, like double check my my lines and stuff. So, but at the same time, he was like, "Well, if you have everything already going, then why don't you just eliminate this injector blower system, which is um, this diagram, which is this part, which is funny because when I took this thing apart, I was like, God, this thing's a rusted heap." It looks horrible, and like I'm, I'm either gonna have to like repair it or, or like you know treat it or whatever. And and I didn't know what <laughs> what it was, but then he said it was basically like useless. They got rid of it like two uh, two years later. So I've been looking at this now that I got the document uh, the the diagram. I've been actually looking at this and figuring out okay, the the blower there hooked up to this line, and if you look. If you move this out of the way, oh, I got the line connected, but basically, if you move this out of the way, you're going to see that the only thing this is doing is it going right into this pipe, and this pipe is blowing air on these injectors. Like, that's it. So, air goes in and blows there. This thing goes there and it cuts off, does nothing, like nothing else. So, I could just take off the bolt here, take off the bolt here. And remove this piece completely from the engine. And I agree with him. This is literally doing nothing. Like, all it's doing is putting air on the injectors. Like, in order, I guess, for them not to get hot. So, supposedly, this is just, like, completely useless. And uh, that's actually, a, the blower is actually a fire hazard. Because it gets rusted and it'll overheat and it can actually catch fire. Um, the can, though, next to it. I'll have to check to see what the lines going to it are uh, and to see whether or not I can get rid of those. But I suppose the can is just as useless. Uh, just vacuum goes through it. Um, this is also funny. There's uh, This is the EGR valve, I believe. And so like the this I haven't figured out too much uh, where the air is coming from. But anyways, there's a bunch of vacuum lines going through there, coming into here This in these vials. This thing's connected there and then goes into an air pump. I think this is an air pump, which goes into this, which goes into this, this canister thingy, which if I get the line, it's either the, there's like some type of like muffler type thing. And that goes out to this, which was in the frame. Like So basically it's just blowing air out of the system through that into there. So I'll hook that up just because, you know, whatever. Uh, at least it's just a bucket. I mean, the, but the the this thing here is like, it's just as rusted, if not more. I mean, I, I just hate putting like rusted parts back in. Uh, I just don't feel like buying a new one. So for now, I'll put that in. If, if nothing else, they were actually saying... Uh, if I buy a shorter belt, I can just remove this pump altogether and plug this here, and it won't even do anything. So I don't think I should be playing around with um, too much right now. I'll leave the pump on, and at worst case, I can just like have air coming out of here, um, you know. And um, but I will remove this thing since like so many people are telling just like delete it don't delete the egr valve and all the vacuum systems obviously but because there's there's way you can remove like all the emission systems all together but suppose that that really messes up your uh your engine and your, your idle speed and stuff so i'm not gonna play around with that um yeah so less is more i find if i can remove stuff i don't understand there's less for me <clears throat> though it's a little bit dirty now the the black actually came out amazing uh, so that's the interior panels, um, and I'm just doing the door now. I realized that I, I had a bit of um, live footage with uh, my my youngest Gabriel uh, filming yesterday. I just washed the door panels. Um, this they obviously butchered the doors, whatever previous owner to put in these cheap speakers. I looked them up, 
and it seems that uh, this 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 particular company was like a thirteen dollar speaker at uh, Walmart. So yeah, we're gonna replace that. And I was thinking of how um, I was either gonna patch this, but um, I decided to just get new speakers. So I'm gonna replace the standard six six uh, inch speakers in the door and uh, six by eight speakers that I'm gonna basically replace the speakers that they had. So we'll have two speakers in, the, in each door. That should give us some really good sounds. Anyway, the point of this episode is not to talk about speakers. That's what we know the next episode. We were talking about the panels. So yesterday, I basically took a pot of um, uh, soapy water, just a uh, dish soap in uh, hot water. Uh, we, uh, I got the kids to wash that down. And then I took this. Uh, this is just something I got from Walmart as well. Actually, because we were there to get some paint, um, plastic wraps. We're going to convert the garage into a paint shop. So, you know. Anyway, so I found this heavy-duty cleaner and degreaser. So after I put the soapy water, I also sprayed the doors with degreaser, wiped that down, dried it up with uh, my air compressor over there, and now we're ready to paint. So again, we're taking this uh, Duplicolor uh, vinyl and fabric. I uh, don't think I explained this, the, the technique that I was using, because the kids were around and whatever, but basically, uh, this works really, really well. Like, you can see the, the, the beautiful finish that it gives. It's a super nice shine. The texture is still there, um, and I'm sure once it cures, because I can scratch this pretty well, like, pretty easily right now, but I'm sure once it cures fully in, like, a couple of weeks or whatever, it'll probably be a lot tougher, and uh, if it isn't, like, I can put another couple of coats uh, just to give it more base, because I, I think I give it about five coats. It dries in about 15 minutes. It dries super quick, but the trick is with this is to get very, very, like a lot of very light coats. So it works really well, and uh, it looks great. So, uh, yeah, I'll show you guys. You have uh, it. <clears throat> about four or five coats, and it does a really beautiful job. Uh, time will tell to see if I, you know, how well I was able to really do the do the like the, the coats in order to last because I find they scratch really easily. But again, it's the 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 paint should be a lot harder once they had time to cure. So, um, right. So I think this this is a good place to stop this episode. This is a short one. It's just the interior. Um, I got all the pieces done. I store them in here for like once the painting is done. So we have like, um, sorry about the closeness here. The, the pillars are here. Even the um, the mirrors, like the the uh, uh, what do you call this? Sun visors, I guess. Anyways, uh, the last thing to color is the seat. Um, next really nice day, I'll take the seat out in the driveway and I'll clean it with the upholstery cleaner. And actually. Um, this product actually sprays the fabric, so it's vinyl and fabric. So we'll see how that looks. Definitely want to convert the uh, the brown um, fabric to black. So we'll I'll probably have to buy at least another can. Um, so until now, it's been two cans. This is the second can, and it's about two thirds done, uh, just with the doors. So yeah, pretty cool. So, all right. Well, interior, uh, interior panels is done. This uh, this is episode. Next episode will be. Uh, I'm gonna be just this week. I'm gonna be sanding. Uh, I've already started like blo like uh, patching off the windows, the front windows, and the outside is done. I gotta do the inside. Um, basically, just blocking off the entire panels uh, so that the spray doesn't get on that, and then. Uh, <clears throat> Start sanding everything. Uh, oh, I also have to get the um, uh, the decals off of the hood uh, in order to sand under that. And also, I might have a slight patch to, to do. I see a crack on the um, on the just the edge, the front edge of the hood. So I'll have um, I'll, I might have like the sand down to the metal there and maybe, maybe do a bit of putty. So, anyways, this this maybe this week and maybe next week is going to be a lot of just sanding. Uh, sanding and prepping, and then uh, cleaning, and then uh, once everything is is pretty much sanded down and cleaned, 
then I can start thinking about converting this garage into a paint shop, and then uh, we can start uh, by uh, covering everything with the epoxy primer. Once everything is epoxy primed, uh, then I can start the putty, because I'm going to be doing the putty and the fiberglass on top of the epoxy primer. So it should give a really good uh, adherence and have a better chance to fight off rust. So, guys... Uh, I really appreciate when you guys uh, you know chime in, give your comments, uh, encouragements or encouragements rather, or uh, even suggestions, comments, whatever. Uh, like also liking the video really. I don't always say it, but like uh, liking the video really really uh, it helps um, get the videos out there. Um, and uh, all in all, I just hope you guys are enjoying the series. See you.